Can we film this in portrait mode? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge... <laughs> you know what's funny? I was uh, deleting pictures off my phone to create space, and you could clearly see when portrait mode came out. Because mm. it went from like nothing to like everything was in portrait. Just random shit. There was like a picture of a ball, and then like a cup of water. <laughs> Just everything I could get a picture of. It's funny. Dude, you know what? I was watching those videos that I sent you on Instagram in the DMs about that those workout videos. Mm-hmm. Dude, you know why they look so clear? It is it is because of the lighting. Like those oh, are all like LA fitness and stuff and they got like overhead LED yeah. lights and I was like, dude, those things are very well lit. That's why like some people in gyms like this what they'll do is they'll just buy lights that you can have on stands, you know? <laughs> Follow you around with light stands. I mean, if you're doing like a single exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Especially here, I can bring dumbbells to anything. Yeah. You know what and I mean? Not like the light we have, but like no. big blow Huge. signs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, this is the first Q&A of the week. We're going to have two Q&As this week. So. Oh, this is, a, this is a special week. Yeah. This is your first week on the job. Kind of. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess it's not really on the job. <laughs> I mean. Full time. You've been on the job. Yeah. But, dude, I think that um, – I was kind pause, of pause the Q and A. Yeah, we're gonna talk about this first. Uh, first and foremost, proud of you. Thank you. Um, I was kind of pissed when you posted because I was like, "Fuck, you beat me to it." Yeah. Like you even had some of the pictures I was planning on posting, um, and I didn't even think when you asked me about the caption thing. I didn't think to not tell you so you couldn't. I didn't put two and two together. But dude, it's it's crazy because I think I forget sometimes uh, just because we're so entrenched in the day to day that I forget about the journey or I just don't reflect on the journey as much as I should because as I was sitting there trying to write the caption, I kept like writing stuff and deleting it, writing stuff and deleting because I was like telling one story and then I, no, I don't need to say that. And then I would tell another story yeah. and I'm like, oh, I don't need to yeah, put that. I did like, too. Unnecessary information. Yeah. And, uh, but it's just like, man, I was shooting videos on a flip cam in our kitchen and we really, I mean, we were obviously friends enough to live together. Yeah. We really weren't that tight. No. You know, no. we went on a bachelor party together and then you hit me up randomly weeks later. Yeah. And hey, moving back to the state, you need a roommate? Yeah. It's like, I just broke up with my girlfriend. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Totally. Dude, it's crazy. Yeah. It's fucking wild. And it was the coolest thing to see. Like I, I showed you or I told you to look at it. Somebody commented and it was like future goals or something like that. And they yeah. tagged their media person. I was like. Sick. That is cool. Yeah. Somebody is like getting inspired by that. Yeah. Um, and just like, man, I got to, one, I'm proud of you for all the hard work. Two, I'm grateful because you believed in it from the fucking get go when it was really nothing yeah. at all. And I was like, man, this is what I'm going to build and this is what I want to create. And you didn't doubt it. You were just like, dude, dope. I think you will. Let me jump on board. There was no think. <laughs> you know what I mean? I knew you would. That that means a lot to me. And the the last thing I will say is like the fact that certain people tried to talk you out of it and you continually said, No, like I think this is gonna be a good idea. No, I think this is gonna work. No, like I know this is the right path and you just kept going for it is even better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the icing on the cake. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think the first indications that I had were when you were not even doing the online things when I first started at Bigger. And you were taking over as a personal trainer and the head head trainer there. And everybody just gravitated towards you. Your energy, your your uh, ability to, you know, connect with people, your, uh, you know, your focus, your, you know, everything was attention to detail. You know, everybody wanted you to train them. And it was just like, holy shit, he's running this thing. Like, as, as an in-person personal trainer. Yeah. So, anyway... Um, yeah, and then when you were asking to do video, I was like, dude, inside I was like, oh my god, I want to be part of this. Yeah, you know, like, you know, I had, I don't know, I've talked to you about it on the podcast before. I've had like ambitions in IT and stuff like that, but I just never, I, dude, I, I, I said this on the car ride, you know, where we were yesterday with Josephine. I was just like, I've never had that feeling. I, dude, you talked on the podcast about having. Blakely grow up and be like, dude, this is what my, my dad does. You know, this is so dope. This is so dope. And I, I never had that feeling about when I have future kids, like, oh, my dad's 
a desktop support dude at it.com or something, you know, like <laughs> cool, you know, and my dad had a sick job at Alaska airlines. He was probably, you know, top four or five people at Alaska airlines. And I said the same thing. He had groundbreaking decisions that were to do with, you know, September 11th of Alaska airlines and mm. stuff like that. Just like crazy things. There was like 300 people, all the CEOs at his graduate or graduation, his retirement, uh, ceremony, like, I was mind boggled. I was just like, holy shit. People, like 30 people stood up and said how he they affected their career at, uh, yeah. and I was like, damn. So anyway, and I was like, dude, this is it. Like, give me five, give me 10 years, give me 20 years when our kids are 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. And they're like, dude, this is what my dad does. And yeah. I'm like, I, I feel that now. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have a job where they are like, dude. Telling their friends this is what my dad does. So and I'm cool. I'm like, yeah, so cool. And, and the thing is, too, is like, in, it's it's literally impacting people around the world. Dude, yeah. There's people that like have they've I've had multiple people send in before and after pictures mm-hmm. of themselves, and they're like, I've never been a client. Yeah. I just watch your videos. Yeah, I just listen to your podcast. Sick. This is the result. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, even though you're not sitting there coaching an individual, like mm-hmm. you're a part of this machine that's literally just influencing people. One hundred percent. I'm so excited to be able to do. Some like part of me was like, I even told you, so I was like, dude, how can we do more? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know if I can bring you on full time because I don't know what to do. Yeah. But then we started like, we sat down a couple more times. We kept talking and talking and talking. And then I was like, dude, we could do a lot more. Yeah. There's a lot of cool shit we can do. And things just level up. Yeah. Like there's a lot in store. Another thing I had to say is yesterday I went, I was just in the kitchen and I just, I didn't have a freak out, but I just like start like pounding on the counters. I was just like, Josephine. Our future just changed. <laughs> like, shaking. I was so excited. I was so excited. Like, our lives and future just changed. Wait for five years. We will be in a whole different world of yeah. life. Yeah. Like, anyway. But, yeah, I would just – I'm super excited, man. More than anything, I'm excited to see your mood, attitude, energy, just everything change after, like, being in the day-to-day for a yeah. while. The fact that you don't need to worry about that other job anymore, yeah. like number one, like as a best friend, that's so rewarding for me to yeah. be able to like, even like, it's obviously this, this has been built by not just me. There's yeah. been so many people that have helped me, but being able but to be it. leading it and I started it and being able to basically employ my best friend and yeah. say like, yo, like quit your job. I like, don't know, let alone anyone, but not many people ever can say that. It's crazy. With their, with their own company. There's a few, you know, I'm sure like next step Microsoft is, and stuff have, yeah. have cousins and stuff. Yeah. You know? Like my grandfather has a very, very successful business and a, a business and a lot of my aunts and uncles have worked there yeah. and stuff like that. And he said the same thing. That's my goal is to provide every, for yeah. everybody. Yeah. And he has. So that's like same thing. Yeah. Like that's cr- none of, none of our friends I'm assuming, or many people I know say that. That's a dope thing, dude. Next step is buying your mama a house. Yeah. As DJ Khaled with sex. Facts. <laughs> Facts. That's, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. I, I have no doubt that one day you'll say something like that. I bought my mom a freaking Escalade or something. That would, like, to me, like, it's funny because I remember being, like, 18 and being, like, that's what I, I want to, like, do something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, more than anything I wanted to drive or yeah. anything like that. Um, but, dude, it's, and, and you know what's crazy? Like, this is kind of a completely different thing, but I thought about this on... Um, so I hung out with my dad on father's day and I was telling him about this and he was going through some stuff and he asked me for advice Mm -hmm. and I was like, that's great. Like you're asking me for life (laughs) advice. That's sick. Well, like, and I started like talking to him and I just like went on one of my rants and he was like nodding everything. And then we kind of changed up. It was all done. And I was like, okay, whatever. Yesterday he calls me and he was like, I can't get those words out of my head. And I was like, what? And he was like, I listened I listened to you and I thought about it and I just kept thinking about that one thing you told me to do, that mm-hmm. one thing you said. And I did it and it did this and it did that. And he was just going on. And like, he literally took action the next day. I was Dope. like, damn, he called me last night. It was Dope. Monday. Sunday was Father's Day. Yeah. Um, but it was just so crazy to be like, like, so like, that's not buying him a house. But to me, like, that was like, because I can't buy my dad anything. He's, he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not going to like, he doesn't need any, he's the hardest person to buy a gift for because mm. he's like, Oh, I don't need anything. I, I got it. Everything I need. But like, that was like, that was the coolest fucking thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that comes from, honestly, it just comes from all the shit I've learned trying to build this fucking thing and yeah. all the books I've read and all the different things I've done. Um, 
and now being able to do that kind of stuff for you. You know what I mean? Like talking to you about things and then getting you connected with Andreas. Now Andreas Absolutely. is working with you and now you have a new career yeah. and then where's that going to go? Yeah. And how is that going to change how you operate on a daily basis? Yeah. Because I feel like from an outsider's perspective, like you're focused, but you have this fucking like pitch, this high pitch noise in the back of your head, which is your job. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? That's always kind of distracting yes. you. And it's like, I just fucking silenced that, yeah. that noise. Absolutely. And now you can just focus. Yeah. Like I, another thing I told Josephine last night, I was like, dude, I vividly, I vividly remember in our house that we lived together and you were like standing at the kitchen fucking island or whatever the thing, but you're just like, Hey, like, can I give you 200 bucks to do four videos for me or something? And I was like, okay. He's like couple, I don't remember the exact conversation, but it was like one day you can do this for me full time. I was four years ago. Yeah. Four years ago. And I was like, okay, you know, like, <laughs> you, you know, give me 50 bucks a video and we're just f filming on a flip cam, yeah. you know, I'm like, okay, dude, you know, like that'd be sick one day, you know? And then, you know, it, it's been a real whoa, reality, you know, for the last year and a half, yeah. give or take. But four years ago, I was like, okay. Not that I was doubting, yeah. but I did not think that was real. Well, I think, and this kind of goes back to what we were talking about on that one podcast, The Impossible Game. Yeah. You know, I think that, like, I, I create things in my head that, at the present moment, they actually are impossible because I am not where I need to be in order to time. deliver that at the time. Yeah. But I can just see it happening, and, yeah. like, I just... And my thing is this. I always tell people way before something happens. So, like, me telling you that was, like, that was my accountability. Yeah. It's like this is going to happen. And now in the back of my head, I have to make that happen. I do that with everything. Yeah. I do that literally with all kinds of shit yeah. because I just know like I'm going to achieve this. And I just start saying it to people. As yeah. soon as I tell one person publicly, I'm like, fuck, I got to do it. Yeah. It has to happen now. Yeah. I, I, we've had personal conversation about how like impatient I've been, but I am, I'm in awe. I'm in awe. That's reality. Yeah. I am in. It happened fast, honestly. It, yeah. Absolutely. I just think that like, I mean, so for people listening, that, obvi that, obviously. That high pitched noise was very loud for a while yeah, for me. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, like, obviously, as you guys can tell, Travis was able to quit his uh, other job that he had um, to do this full time. Like, I would say you were doing more than part time with me for sure. Sure. But like, we couldn't consider it full time. Yeah. Um, and now this is like his sole career, which is cool. Like, what do you do? I'm a content creator. Yeah. Like, that's dope. Yeah. And I think that for everybody listening, the thing I'm excited about is that this is really just a company investment into delivering more value to the listeners, to the audience uh, on Instagram, on my email list. Um, Cause we're going to be doing a ton of free guides that you can get. And then my newsletter is always fire and it's never selling. It's just info. Oh, yeah. um, more blogs. We're going to be able to do new things with video content in general, get back on YouTube, do educational stuff. Um, just the quality of everything's going to go up and we're going to be able to do more of it in, which is crazy. Cause I was like, okay, so we do a newsletter every day. We do a podcast four days a week. We do Instagram every day, but we no. might have to do Instagram twice a day. Yeah. We're probably going to do another video every week. You know what I mean? Like we're not doing more four podcasts a week. Yeah. I don't think I could, I don't <laughs> think I could do that, but, um, <laughs> I think people appreciate yeah. four. Yeah. I think four is a good number. Yeah. It, three is a good number. P yeah. Four and is people like are, people are, open their eyes. They're like, you do four episodes yeah. a week. How? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Ask but, Cody. <laughs> but I think that, uh, yeah. No, no, like, I just think that it's, it's just a testament to where our team's going. Like, yeah. and I say this in the most humble way possible. Like the, we, me and Travis used to say all the time to take over, like yeah. we're taking over like years ago. We said that, but I mean it yeah. like my goal isn't like my goal is very humble and it's very impact based. But I truly do not only want to take over this industry of coaching, um, but I truly feel that our team is the team to do it. Yeah. Like our team is insane. Yeah. Like it's literally, it baffles me when I like, every time I get on a meeting or I'm talking to the coaches, I'm like, like Haley just finished her thing. She's going to be an RD. So she's going to be a registered dietitian. We have a, a researcher as a chief science officer. We have over... Last time I counted over 37 certificates, but I think we have more, which is just certification courses, which aren't easy to accomplish. Um, and that doesn't account for college degrees and stuff like yeah. that. Like, it's just crazy where, like what we're doing and how invested people are on the team into impact. 
like, and, and if there's one piece of advice for the business owners, I can say listening is the team's foundation is so built on just creating value that we never get distracted by anything materialistic or monetary. It's just go, 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 because we see value, we see impact and we just chase that. And everybody's doing a collaborative thing to make everything better constantly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm super fucking proud of everybody on the team. Ditto. Um, shout out to Haley. It's her birthday today when we're recording this. I just texted you, but yep. if you're listening, happy late birthday. Yep, ditto. <laughs> but, birthday, Haley, that's um, but 20, yeah, man. 25. 25. 25. She's killing it for Dude, 25. That's what I'm thinking. I, mean, I guess I'm only 27, but. <laughs> you are too, my guy. Yeah, I'm going to be 28 in a month. Yeah. I Almost had, exactly, 24th. I had some personal goals not saying everybody has to do this but i had some personal goals to, like some to make myself feel like an adult you know like i bought my house but by 30 mm-hmm. you know i was in a relationship by 30 not that any of that is like a timeline but i just was like man i hope that happens but yeah. i wasn't going to push it or force it i was going to let it be organically but i started making those steps including working part-time with you to make those at least the house purchase possible so i started that 27 2017 you know it took me about three years or whatever to put a down payment down and do yeah. my own thing and so yeah she's definitely killing by 25 yeah she the youngest on her team i don't know people's ages yes yeah i'm like 90 percent sure yeah adam looks way younger than he is <laughs> yeah he how, just had a birthday how old was he yeah i think 35 I think it was 35. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> I like laughed. I was like, bro, you're not 35. Yeah. Come on. Not that 35 is old, no. but I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you look so young? 29. Brandon is the same way. Roberts? Brandon Whitehead. Or Whitehead, yeah. He is like. Dude. Oh, yeah. Remember in Scottsdale? Yeah. Yeah. No, San Diego. Oh, yeah. It was, no, it was Scottsdale. Scottsdale. Yeah, because he was in San Diego too. Yeah. But yeah, I was like, no, you're not. That was actually somebody I didn't believe when he told yeah. me his age. I was like, no, you're not, dude. You're not. Is he? What? How old is he? 37? He's up. Uh, I want to say he's somewhere between 35 I'm and 40. I'm sorry if I'm wrong, man, but I just remember it was a lot older than I thought. Yeah, it was somewhere between 35 and 40. Yeah. But yeah. I was I was definitely assuming like late 20s. Yep, absolutely. Same with Adam. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. I mean, that just shows their health. Yes. <laughs> We're killing yes. it. <laughs> yes. We're young and vibrant. Yeah. <laughs> but I get it. Yeah, I think, uh, no, dude, I'm excited to turn 28. Not that 28 is a special age, but I think some people get like nervous. Like, I'm so excited to be 30. It's weird. But, dude, like, I was, oh, dude. Because it's, of it's all those milestone. things I told you? Yeah, it's yeah. a milestone. It's just like, yeah, I don't know. But um, we should probably get to the questions. But sure. the, I just I know wanted, a lot of people that were not happy to be 30. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I know a lot of people that stopped being happy to turn anything after age 23. Yeah. Nobody likes you when you're 23. Bling way too. You know where that song? Oh, What's yeah. What's my age yeah, again? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, song. definitely. But I think uh, I wanted to bring that up just to give you a shout out. Thank give you. Give you praise. You're Appreciate killing that. it, man. Um, I'm really excited where this is going to go. Um, and Ditto. for people listening, like any, like as cheesy as it sounds, anything is anything's possible. Yeah. I told my best friend four years ago that I was going to hire him full time. <laughs> And now we're doing it. Yeah. And it and it's solely because I just I just followed my passion. And I'm not there's nothing else I've ever done. Yeah. Besides this. And just to tell people, like, um, I did IT networking at Boeing, like, and I'm not saying that's some big boot guru job, but I made good money. Yeah. And I was just like, All right, you keep telling yourself that, but you have to match my salary. Yeah. And I was just like, if you can do that, A, I'll round of applause and I'll be ecstatic to drop my job. Yeah. Just because I want that opportunity, but I'm not going to take a pay cut to, you know, work on something where I need to pay my bills. Yeah. When I was when I was writing that caption <laughs> I wrote, uh, like there's nothing better than there's nothing better than this feeling, being able to uh like I basically said, like let my best friend quit the job that he doesn't like at all. Yeah. And Shannon was like, I'd probably reword that <laughs> just in case his other employers are looking. Yes. <laughs> like he just wants to leave on a good terms. Like, all right. Yeah. Job he likes more. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I changed <laughs> it, but go. um, and, and it's not like you said, not that you had a bad job, but this no, is way, way cooler, man. Yep. It's just like I'm just way more excited about it. We're changing people's fucking lives. There's nothing better than that. Yeah. You know. All right, man. Cool. Let's get to these questions, guys. Last um, thing, last thing, real quick. What's good? You made me think of this when you talked about the thing I uh, said about Blakely. I was reading this book today. This is the question for you guys today listening. Really deep. What do you want written on your tombstone? 
my name. Well, duh. <laughs> but thinking about that today, I was reading and I just stopped and I was like, fuck, what is it going to say? You know, people loving husband. Yeah. You know, is great. That, is great. that on your headstone? I thought that was like in your obituary. I don't know what an obituary is. In the newspaper, like they talk oh. about you. Well, that too. I want it to be oh, better. Yeah, but yeah, I think yeah. uh, like a tombstone is one sentence. Yeah. Describe like what you did on earth in one line, you know, or the, the eulogy given. Same as it, What are they going to say? Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, you want the you Google to say something. <laughs> Have you seen Zoolander? Oh, you haven't seen Zoolander. I actually, no, I did. Okay, Me good. And Joe's he says Google that. He's like. The you Google list. Yeah. You're a you Google <laughs> What? You know a person who gives you eulogies? It's like, oh. Uh, <laughs> Zoolander's good. It is. It was it's funny. funny. I didn't laugh as hard as everybody made me watch it. But Well, if you watched it when you were 14 when it came out, okay. it would have been a lot funnier. Okay. Yeah. You know? All right. All right, man. Questions. Rapid fire. Yeah, okay. These are from Instagram. First one is by uh, Well by Sarah. How do you handle clients that are not into working on mindful stuff? mindful like mindfulness stuff okay. like jur- journaling and meditating um you you can't uh what's the saying you can't uh you can lead a horse to water but you can't get it to drink kind of thing you know like it, at the end of the day they have to want it yeah. so i'm never really trying to convince people who don't want to do it to do i will it. bring up the idea but I, they have to. I mean, it's even like you're, you're a perfect example of yeah. personal development. You mean when we start living with each other? Yeah and, yeah. and I was like, dude, you should start journaling. And you're like, dude, no, I don't journal. It's like, you should read this. I don't read, dude. No. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to leave it. And then years later, you're like, man, I'm, I'm interested in personal development. I'm like, oh, you should start reading. I hate reading. I'm like, okay, wait a little bit. Yeah. You know, Andreas talks to you. I yeah. talk to you. Like you see different things. And I think sometimes it's like that. But you also weren't coming to me from a standpoint of, Dude, I'm so fucking stressed out. Yeah. What do I do? Yeah. You know, I think it's different. If a client is like, hey, I'm having anxiety. Um, I have depressive thoughts. I'm just not motivated. At that point, I'm going to say, hey, are you open to trying some mindset practices? If they are, then I'm going to teach them meditation. I'm going to teach them how to journal. I'm going to tell them exactly what to journal. I'm going to have books sent to their house so they can read the books and, and really learn about things that are going to help them have more mindfulness. But you can't force somebody to do that. And I don't think you should. Like... Nope. If somebody's like, hey, I want to lose weight. Hey, are you meditating? It's like, whoa, no. <laughs> like, get them in a deficit. You know yeah. what I mean? I think um, if they ask, then you can try to help them with. Um, so I don't think you're going to have an issue if you do it with the right people. Yeah. I don't think if, any- they, if they ask or you ask. Yeah, and they accept. Correct. Right. Um, but I, So I'm assuming like let's say they're stressed out and you say, hey, I would suggest this. And they're like, no, I'm not about it. One of two things. One, try to help them work on the stress. Two, educate them on why that will help. Maybe give them some real life examples. Because, you know, even for me, like, I had mentors trying to convince me into meditating. And I was not about meditating. It just, to me, it was like, I don't want to just, I mean, first I was like, I don't want to sit crisscross on a rug. And hum. Hum. You know, it's like, that's not what meditation is. But... And then I was like, I can't think of nothing. My mind is constantly going. It's like chaos in my head. They're like, that's impossible to think of nothing. Meditation isn't thinking of nothing. It's distracting your mind from negative shit. So you can think about what you want to think about and get clear. And I was like, okay, that makes more sense. So they educated me, but I still wasn't bought in. And then I had to witness stories like, well, how did meditation help you? How did meditation help this successful person? Why does Tony Robbins meditate and Robin Sharma and all these successful people that I look up to? Why do all these fitness professionals meditate? It kind of starts putting two, two and two together. I'm like, this isn't a coincidence, right? There's something here. Um, and then that gave me enough buy-in to try it. So educate them on why it might help and then give them real world practical examples of what it has done for you um, and what it has potentially done for other people that you know. Copy. And then they might do it and try different things. You know, if you're all about meditation, but they're not, yeah. try journaling, send them a book, do something. You know what I mean? I think some people will send books that are like fucking like textbooks about life. It's like, send them a story like the alchemist. It's short. It's a, it's a tale. It's, it's a fable. It's a fake fictional tale about a little boy journaling, journeying to his personal legend, which is basically like journaling or journey journeying Okay. to his uh, personal legend, which is basically like your destination, your ultimate destination as a man. Um, And it's really, really good, but it's really easy to read. 
And that's a good introduction. That was actually the first mindset book I ever re- read. Um, that's a good introduction into those things. Leader Who Had No Title is another one. The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. All mindset books, but they're all stories. Hmm. So instead of me reading uh, like Meditations by Marcus Aurelius right out the gate, which you probably haven't heard of, but Marcus Aurelius was a Greek philosopher, Roman philosopher, and it's his journal. But it's it's re- it's like reading Shakespeare. It's really hard to read. And it's very dry, right? But there's a lot of good takeaways in it. But that is not the first book I would ever recommend. Yeah. So you got to be careful with what you're recommending to people. Um, but yeah, and I mean, it just comes down to them wanting it. Yep. Not forcing it. Yeah. All right. So the next question is going to be from... Um, I, I, E.K. Karam, 13. Ek Karam. What do you think about di- diet apps? Do you believe it can achieve certain results? I am not a big fan of diet apps. Um, so I think that – I think there's – I mean there's a few companies that have created these and I think the science behind them makes sense because science is numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Science is formulas. Data. Um, to It's data that uh, gets collected and then it spits out an algorithm to put you in a deficit. That's what these apps do. So the science ba- that it's backed up by is sound. It makes sense. Um, and the people behind them are doing them for the right reasons. But I think it's only going to work. I think a diet app would work for me. Um, I basically live in the gym. Uh, you don't have to push me to eat well or track macros or weigh my food because I do it every day without asking. You know what I mean? Like Consistency or accountability is not an issue with me. And I also take periodic times at maintenance in surplus and stuff like that. So if I was like, oh, I'm going to do a cut, but I don't want to hire a coach, I could get the app and I probably would get results because all the app is doing is it's slowly but surely calculating a deficit for you. So if you don't lose weight this week, it drops your calories. You'll start losing weight. When you stop, it'll drop calories. That's going to get you a result. It, yeah. it's, I mean, science. Um, the hard part is when do you take diet breaks? right? That might not help your hormones, but it's going to help your brain. It's going to help psychological aspects. It's going to help adherence. Um, what happens when you are tired or you're overtrained or you're under recovered or you're not sleeping well, or you're too stressed out from work or you have a social event, like the algorithms can't plug humans into a, a formula. You know what I mean? So I think that sometimes it can work, but as a whole, I think nothing can replace coaching. Like there's something about human connection and making adjustments based on a person's physiology, psychologically, in lifestyle, psychology, biofeedback. yeah, in biofeedback, yeah. So, I'm not a fan. I think uh, I think they can work for a select few people. I'd yeah. worry about how to transition from cut to maintenance to reverse diet stuff like that inside of an app. Um, but I think that there's just there's a there's a barrier gap, you know, where uh, it's not it's not bridging the gap because it doesn't understand what's going on in somebody's head. Yeah, you know, and I think. I think if the the very few people that it does work for are already doing these things so diligently that they have the knowledge on what, exactly. how to do the stuff that the app's going to do. Exactly. So, like, if I were to do it. Yeah. Or even somebody that's just tracking consistently, like, and, you know, diligently, it, they are going to know when to do that stuff and the app's not even going to have to tell them. Yeah. But, but you got to you gotta understand how to coach yourself. Absolutely. Which is tough. All right. Um, next question is from B opposite 23 top five tips you can give to other coaches for growing their business. I believe this is Trey who Trey. is a new client of mine. Sick. So shout out to Trey. Um, top five tips for somebody to grow their business. Number one, try with this rapid fire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number one would be, um, I think like the overarching theme, this is like, this is a tip, but it's really just like how your brain should work. This is your philosophy, uh, value over income. Like, I don't think you should predicate your success on how much you're making or what your revenue is or how many clients you're working with. I think you should predicate your success on how much you're helping each individual. You know, um, I'm not worried about total numbers. I'm worried about impact created. And I've always been that way. Um, so I think making sure you don't lose sight of that and always keep that at the forefront because a lot of people, when they start scaling their business or trying to grow, they lose sight of that because they want more money. They want more attention on Instagram. They want all these things like I could give a fuck about likes. Am I helping people? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's all that matters. So, um, 
And I would argue that some of the people that help the most don't get the most likes because it's not me shirtless flexing, yeah. right? And with a catchy line, it's not gonna help anybody. It's just a cool picture that people will like, yeah. you know. Um, and I and I love. I mean, you know me. I love photography, so I like having cool photos for my captions. But like, if my captions is not providing you with value to leave away with, I'm not writing it. Um, so I think staying true to that and not letting that um, deter you. Um, number two would be outsource as soon as possible. Um, I think. I waited too long to start outsourcing and delegating things. Um, I waited too long to get Tori on the team. I waited too long to bring you on um, full time. I waited too long to bring on my first coach. Um, I don't think you should rush those things. Like, don't do them if you're not ready or you you don't have a big enough company to do it. But at the same time, like me delegating all these different things allowed me to do what I do so much better. Um, Lisa shared something with me last week. And basically just was like, hey, I just want you to know that the I've noticed such a big change in you the last six months of how you're leading the team and how you're guiding us. And I just want to thank you. And I was like, whoa, like that's, and it was way longer than that, what she said, but it was just super impactful to me to hear because I've been trying so hard to focus on leadership. Um, and part of that was like, what do you want to do? Okay, I'm going to empower you to do it. Yeah. What do you want to do? Okay, let's do it. What do you want to do? Okay, let's create it. Like, I'm like, how can I build these people up? And I think- that comes from A, delegating, and, and B, from building a team that has similar views, points as you, um, and you want to empower. You can't be a control freak. Yeah. And I think that's hard for a lot of- Or micro. Manage. Or micromanage. Yeah. And that comes from being a control freak. You yeah. know, like a lot of a lot of business owners are like- It's mine. I do it best. Yeah. So I'm going to do everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or I'm going to let you do it, but I'm going to watch over your shoulder. Yeah. And it's like, that was one of the things Lisa applauded me for. She was like, you let me be flexible. Like you let me do things the way I want to do it as long as we're using our systems and we're all aligned. And I was like, but that is our system. Our brand is tailored. So your lifestyle should be tailored. I wrote a post about this and I was talking to my dad about this. And I think that you should create a lifestyle that you actually want to live, which means everybody on my team, I want to empower them to create a lifestyle that they want to live. Not the lifestyle I want to live, right? We're all individuals. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think you need to empower that. So number two is delegate and, and empower your team to do more. Can, so, I, can I ask you a question yeah. about that? Um, so how do you actually know? I don't think you do, but how do you, <laughs> how do you actually know you waited too long to bring us on full-time, part-time individually? Yeah. So there's, I mean, you don't it, know it, until it, you actually do it. And then you're like, Oh wait, I waited too long, but it depends on the if person. you did it earlier, it might have been too early. Yeah, I, I agree with that to an extent. Um, I think that for certain, like so for like Tori, I knew I waited too long because by the time I brought her on, I was burnt out. Like okay. I was really tired um, and I was doing too many things and, and it, I was getting really stressed. I think it's easier to understand that if you would have done it earlier, it would have only helped you. Yeah. By the time I realized I, yeah, I was too late, it was like, I mean, I, I brought her on right away. Yeah. It was like, I need this now, yeah. you know, and and at the time I was uh, interviewing people for the assistant role and then I ran into Travis and he, mm -hmm. he linked mm -hmm. me and her up. Um, but for her, I knew because I was burnt out. Courtney was the first coach. Same thing. I was just, I was like, I'm, I'm, I knew because I was like, I'm working with too many people right now. Um, and it wasn't that I wasn't providing value because I will no matter what <laughs> provide value. It was that I had no personal life. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, okay, all I do is work. And sometimes I can train. It's like, if I'm not taking care of myself mm -hmm. and I am a health coach, what is going on? Yeah. So I had to delegate some of my clients to her. Um, with you, I think it was a matter of like, totally understand. I don't think I knew until, you know what I mean? But, yeah. but I think even just this recent time, yeah. you and I talked and we were like August earliest, September. Yeah. I called you two days later and was like, fuck it right now. Yeah. When can you quit? But it, and I think for me having that conversation with you was like, if I, make the leap now with him. If I invest now, it's going to allow me to get to that impossible game that I have in mind yeah. way sooner. Yep. Um, so I, I don't think this move was like, I waited too long. I think I was going to wait too long. And then I corrected myself before I did. I agree. I think what's going through my head is if you would have said exactly what you just said, Hey, I need to do this now because I need to get to where I need to go. If you would have made that decision in February, you could have or would have or might have of reacted different to the quarantine yeah. and reacted, you know, you would have went through that completely different. But since we went, experienced that and went through that 
and gotten to where we are now after that and then made that decision, if we if we go through it again or something like it or more severe or something, we're at least at this point to where we can survive at minimalist yeah. to go through something like that again. Well, and I think like the good thing is, is like we're an online coaching company who has mastered the process of online coaching. Um, and, and I say that because we put a massive emphasis on our systems behind yeah. how we coach people, Correct. not only from how are we creating nutrition plans and training programs? How are we delivering those? How are they, how is the user experience, but how are the systems on the back end? How, how is the coaching actually being done like hands on? Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that a lot of people don't have that. And a lot of people who had to make the shift to get online after this happened, they were like trying to figure that out where we're here. Like, Hey, we've figured that out years ago yeah. and we've been doing it. Yeah. Um, but number two is delegate. Um, number three is create more content. <laughs> I think like it, it's, a, I always try to avoid saying that because I think it's just like a obvious one, but I think it's, I think a lot of people don't put enough emphasis on content. Yeah. I really don't think they do because they think that it doesn't bring revenue. Well, because it doesn't, you know, it's free content. I highly, highly disagree. Indirectly. With that. Absolutely. Okay. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's no immediate ROI, return on investment. So people are like afraid to do it because they're like, well, but if I create a funnel and then I run ads to it, I can get them to buy coaching in the funnel. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, okay, so a random person is going to click on your Facebook ad, go through a funnel and hire you when they don't even know who you are. Like this is a coaching relationship. Yes. With us, people are like, oh, I have been following your content for six months, 12 months, three years. The guy who asked this question, yeah. I was talking to him. One of the reasons he's working with me is because he's getting ready to become pro wrestler. And he saw what I was doing with Chad Gable. But he was like, oh, me and my girl have been following you for three or four years. We just watched. Yeah. And I'm like, damn. So my return on investment is like, I'm going to do this now. Three or four years, we're going to have a client from it. Yeah. People don't think like that. When I think like direct or immediate ROI with free content is that even one person – could see your very first video on Instagram or whatever you want to consider content Click. and you have a great caption educating and telling them why you're doing this and, and almost uh, making a relationship through your caption. Yeah. They could be like, I like the way he says this. I I'm signing up. So, but here's the counter to that. It's marketing without pushing. 100%. It's, it's organic content marketing. There you go. So the reason I agree with that, but but there's a slight difference in most cases with that. Okay. Somebody comes in, they're like, man, that caption really spoke to me. Clicks on my profile. Holy shit. There is so yeah. much content yeah. that I relate to that yeah. I can learn from. Let me check out his website. Holy shit, there's over 500 blogs. Yeah. Whoa, he has a chief science officer on his team. Like, Then it just starts piling on. And then they're like, oh, I just found you last week. But it's because they just went down the pit. So I always tell people like you should – when I say create more content, you should have a vault. Yes. Like you go to your website. You should have a ton of content. Blogs are not dead. They're still amazing. You should have a ton of content that allows people to learn for free, period. Um, Agreed. Value over income, delegate, content more. I think honestly like that's probably the biggest three. I don't even know if I could give five because I think if people just do that – and here's another one. Consistency. I was going to say be patient, but patient and consistency would be number five. The yeah. last one, number four. Um, I think that, I think that there's a I think I just lost my train of thought with the patient com comment. Oops. It's all good. Patience is very, very important. Yeah. But that's not what I was going to say. Dang. This doesn't happen very often. <laughs> and it's gone into the cloud. <laughs> Where is the cloud? Um, patience consistency was number five. Yeah. There was something I was going to throw in before that. But I think honestly, if you, if you do those, those three things though, and you just stay super far, Oh, I know what it was. So do those three things and then create a vision. Like I remember, I remember five years ago doing this. I remember three years ago doing this. I did it this year, January 1st, vividly like creating the image of where I wanted to be in a year, three years, five years. And I recreate it every year. I sit there and I write it down word for word, hour by hour. What is my perfect day? What is the perfect career? What is the perfect life? What is the perfect family? What is the perfect husband? Everything. Impossible game. Mm -hmm. I think people need to create that impossible game on paper and really visualize it. And then the last one to encompass it all is just be patient. Trust the process. Yeah. That's hard, man. Hard for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Hard for me. But boy, I can tell you today, 
it's worth it. Yeah. It is absolutely worth it. It's tough. I, it, I, I was the most impatient kid ever. People, growing up. including myself, sometimes are so impatient to wait for the result. Yeah. Like, dude, I got to go get something else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Convenience and, and short-term I'm gratification. proud of myself. <laughs> yeah, good shit. I am too. All right. Dope. Next Top one. five. All right. Um... Next one is going to be from Tris Kaysen. Uh There's a two-part question. Uh, part one is, why do we see extension in the lower back during bench press and others have a five-point point? It cut off. He, he DM'd me. Oh. Um, so a five-point content contact would be both feet but shoulders, right? And Hands. Low back. Oh, okay. So, like, against the bench. Oh, okay. So, like, basically, you're not arching. Yeah. Um, why do we see an arch? So, number one, if you create an arch, two things happen. Number one, you're changing the angle of, I believe, your humerus, but regardless of, of your bench press, when you're doing the movement, you're, cr- like, you can do a decline bench press. And you're going to be able to bench press heavier than you would a flat bench press because of the angle. Well, if you arch your back you decline your, your upper chest, clavicle, thoracic spine, yep. making it decline, making it a little bit easier. Your chest is also sticking up higher. Guess what? That's less range of motion to get to your chest. Easier when you have less range of motion. Um, that's why power lifters arch. As long as their butt is touching, it's safe. So if you uh, really work on thoracic mobility, thoracic extension, you'll be able to arch more and bench heavier. And there's nothing wrong with that, really. I mean, it's, it's how power lifters do it. It's just part of the game. Um, so I think that why do we see it a lot? It's, we see it because it's our body compensating to do a movement better and easier. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you look at, look at sprinters, if you look at their position, they're super hyper extended. If you stood there like this, is that a healthy posture? No, but they're faster that way. So they're going to encourage it. Hmm. Right. So it depends what you're trying to get after Now, what I will say too, is, is working with people who aren't necessarily just power lifters, there's nothing wrong with a little arch. I think in school we were taught that there was like it's going to cause lumbar issues. It's not the case. If somebody has already has pre-existing low back issues, then maybe you do a floor plus press with their feet up so their knees are bent so their back stays flat. But otherwise, I don't think it's worth worrying about. Like it's not going to cause any issues. Um, let them bench heavier. You know, if their butts touch it, it's a crazy arch and that's an issue. But just work on thoracic mobility. Um, I don't think you have to worry about as much as people made you believe. Um, and if you're interested in having a heavier bench, you might actually want to try it. Uh, and then he had another question. I think the part two is asking, uh, the pros and cons of the five point contact, uh, pros and cons would just be, I mean, pros potentially safer on your low back, especially if you already have issues. Uh, um, cons would be your bench press might suffer as far as how heavy you can go. Oh yeah. All right, cool. Um, Oh, no, you're right. He had a se- separate question. About like triceps or yeah, something, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll do, uh, what are your top three tricep ex- exercises? Dips, straight bar, cable pushdowns, and uh, dumbbell skull push pushers. Downs? Yep. Is that, that's not a pull down? Pull down would be straight arm. So your lats. Yeah, push down is ah, extending the elbows. Yep. Um, so dips? Di- dips, pushdowns, and... Just dumbbell skull crushers. Ooh. I like dumbbell skull crushers better than an overhead cable extension just because I feel it in my triceps more. Mm. And for some people, it'll be the opposite. Um, so find ones that work well with you. But the key here is I like doing one that is an overload movement. Um, and it's like not just triceps and that's a dip. Dips still inquire uh, your chest to work. It's a little more functional. I like throwing that in there. Um, push down, you have to have overhead extension. You have to have, it puts your, your shoulder and your elbows in two different joint angles. And that's going to encourage more growth because there's multiple heads in the tricep and you're going to get more lengthening on one. You're going to get more shortening and peak contraction on another. Um, so doing some kind of overhead is going to maximize the stretch phase and doing some kind of push down is going to allow you to overload the contraction phase. So I like splitting it up that way. Um, I just typically like a skull crusher, dumbbell skull crusher with neutral grip best. That's just what I feel the most. Hmm. Dips, push down, skull crushers. Nice. All right. Uh, next one is going to be from. I might switch the dips with a close grip bench. <laughs> just throwing that out there. I just thought of that, but continue. New question for you to think about. Uh, is from, I think it's Sonia Rosario. 
five. Dude, I killed that name. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, what do you recommend for joint and tendon health? Sleep. Um, sleep is going to be up there. I mean, if you're asking me for like supplements and shit like that, not a whole lot. Probably. I mean, collagen might help. Um, uh, I like Top Notch Nutrition's uh, Relief, um, curcumin, turmeric, uh, blueberries, olive oil, just anti-inflammatory foods in general. Blueberries. Um, blueberries are anti-inflammatory. Mm-hmm. Olive oil, walnuts, stuff like that. Um, ginger, garlic. There's a lot of anti-inflammatory foods. Um, fish oil. Uh, eating enough protein and then training properly. Yeah. That's the biggest things. Like if you're sleeping well, you're going to be carving. If you're taking like the basic supplements and just eating well for an anti-inflammatory diet, you're going to have less inflammation. If you're eating enough protein, you're going to have better recovery of tissues, which includes tendon and ligaments. Um, and then last but not least, proper strength training versus like tons of cardio and running and long distance stuff because that's going to beat up your joints. Yeah. Our right, next question is asking about um, our apparel. Have you seen, seen this question? Nope. This guy is saying, hey, do you guys sell your shirts? I'm not a member, but really dig the design and love the podcast. Thank you. And yeah. yes, we do. Um, website. Yeah, we'll link it. It's not on our website. It's a separate website. Well. So I'll link it and we'll link it in the show notes. Yeah. Um, we typically, I think we only publicly give it to members. Okay. But I'm happy for podcast listeners to rock it too. Or you can wait till my birthday and support the cause. Um, Shannon's still creating them right now, but we're going to be doing a different shirt every month, and it's going to be like a charity shirt. Sick. Yeah, so we're going to pick a TCM on it? Yep, it'll have TCM, and then on the back it's going to have a quote. Um, So it'll be a different quote every time, different color every time. Um, I believe we're going with like a a forest green, like a dark green. For the first one? Yeah, because that's one of my favorite colors. That's what I wanted to do. We're going to launch it on my birthday, July 24th. Um, All the proceeds will go to Children's Hunger Fund on this first one. Um, So we get nothing out of this, no profit whatsoever. We're working with the the, our print uh, company to set it up to where like all the funds just go directly there. And you'll know how much, how many meals you're providing per shirt. So... Um, be on the lookout for that. If you want to wait a month, um, almost to the dot a month away, we'll be able to, uh, be able to get you that July 24th. Yep. And we'll announce that when the time comes. Nice. I'm excited for that. Yeah. It's gonna be cool. All right. So, uh, next question is when a new client reaches out and is a, and is a beginner, do you have to set a protocol when it comes to programming, programming? I don't know. He has another, I think he like, (laughs) Ah, I think he corrected man, himself. Sorry. These are in the little form boxes, yeah. so sometimes it gets hard for people. When a new client reaches out and is a beginner, do you have a do you have a set protocol when it comes to programming, or do you program for their needs based off their assessment? Uh, I I program based off their needs after the assessment. I think you know I have templates, but for me, templates as a coach, I have I have my favorite splits that I like out. to use. I have my favorite. Uh, ratio of movement patterns. I have my favorite way to make sure posture is aligned and things are going well. Um, I have a, a, a good general like volume to start people with. So I do have a template. You know, if I have a guy who wants to build muscle and can train four days a week, I have an upper lower split that I'm going to use off that. But what you'll see inside of my personal templates as a coach isn't barbell bench press. It's horizontal push. Yeah. And then accessory for horizontal push, unilateral overhead press, you know, or unilateral horizontal row. So I'm, I'm doing a certain amount of unilateral work, certain amount of push, certain amount of pull, certain amount of vertical movements, certain amount of squat, hip hinge, stuff like that. Certain amount of things for the core. Um, but when I see somebody's assessment that determines how much volume I put into each category and exactly what exercises go associated with those movement patterns. For sure. So kind of, I do have a protocol, but, uh, nothing happens to after the assessment. Gotcha. All right. Uh, we'll see. I think there's only... Um, next one is from... K- oh, I'm sorry. That last question was from Coach Um Man, I forgot to say the names. My apologies. Um, next question is from Kiel Vod. Chrono Nutrition says calories are used best earlier in the day, but person likes to eat before bed. What what are they going to adhere to more? Go with that. I mean, Chrono Nutrition does suggest that nutrient timing is going to favor the morning, and that is true. 
Um, if you can adhere to that, go for it. I eat the majority of my calories in the morning. Yeah. Um, and that the studies on current nutrition influence that. However, I don't prioritize that over adherence to a calorie deficit. So if I'm working with somebody and that doesn't work for their schedule, I throw it out. It's not worth it because the calorie deficit is still more important than any type of chrononutrition. And I think that that comes later on down the road when you're really trying to optimize things. So if we look at the pyramid of, of importance, right, calories, macros, micros, meal timing, I would say meal timing in micros can kind of be interchanged for body composition purposes, but meal timing would be chrononutrition. Yeah. So we still have to lock down calories, still have to lock down macros, still got to be eating really good foods, and then we can talk about chrononutrition. So most of the time you don't have to worry about it. It's further down the chain. Exactly. Okay, cool. Um, from Tam Fit Twenty One, for someone in cutting phase, how beneficial is ten milligrams first thing in the AM with three thousand steps? Ten milligrams of what? Uh, yo, maybe. Yo, him bean. Yo, him bean. Yo, him bean. What is that word? Did you just <laughs> just skip it because you didn't want to pronounce it? No. I- Benefit. I thought it was like a misspelling. Oh. <laughs> Y-O-H-I-M-B-E. Yohimbean. Um, Yohimbean is a fat loss supplement. Um, she's asking how much do, we, do you take? For someone in a cutting phase, how beneficial is you, Yohimbean? 10 milligrams for I'm not, AM3. I'm not going to say 10 milligrams because you have to look up the recommendations on like examine.com. Um, I'll link that in the show notes. Yep. Examine.com slash Yohimbean is probably where it is. But um, it's usually – I want to say it's like – 2.5 milligrams per 50 kilograms of body weight or something like that. So you got to do the calculations because if you take too much of yohim bean, there are negative impacts. Um, 50% of people, I, that's not an actual accurate statistic, but just I would just say roughly half the people that take it um, get anxiety. So it, it can uh, kind of work your adrenals too much, I think, and it hypes you up. And it does work better with caffeine. So it's one of those things where it's like, you have to take it fasted in the morning. You should take it before exercise because that's when it's going to be most effective. And you should take it with caffeine if you want it to be most effective. Um, on top of that, you have to be aware that it might create some sense of anxiety. So you might want to not take it at all. So take it. Um, if you start experiencing more anxiety, stop taking it. It's not yeah. worth it. It's not one of those supplements. I've taken it more than once because I don't get anxiety from it. I've taken it with photo shoot preps. Um, it's, it's not one of those ones that makes a massive difference, but it's one of the only fat loss supplements that has been proven in studies to be somewhat effective for stubborn body fat. But again, it's, it's, it should be reserved for people who are like, I have almost a full six pack and yeah. I have a little bit of belly fat to lose. Mm. Cool. Take that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you're on your last four weeks of the cut or whatever it is. For sure. Yeah. All right. This is the last question. I think this is a good question to end with. What is the biggest misconception people have about being an online coach? I think uh, I know you're gonna say the first one is uh, sitting on the beach. Yeah, sitting <laughs> on the beach. Like I think that's like a there's like a bunch of memes for all my coaches yeah. that are like just they're just sipping a mai tai on the beach. Like, dude, I so when I was clearing space on my computer <laughs> to save shit, I uh, I found a folder called Vision Board. And I deleted it, but um, I should take a screenshot of this. Yeah, stuff you should have, dude. But it was, uh, I made it in like 2012. And one of them was a person sitting on a beach with a computer. Because <laughs> I assume that's what online coaches did. What are you going to do? Someday I'm going to coach people from the beach drinking a fucking, I don't like Mai Tais or margaritas. So maybe, uh, what are those? Uh, mojito. I could drink a mojito. Yeah. Those are good. Um, not a margarita guy. Yeah. Ugh. Shannon, Shannon's all about margaritas. She likes jalapeno, dude. T- tequila a lot of people, and jalapeno margarita. A lot of people does. Oh, does. dude, jalapeno is so gross to me. I hate the flavor. Yeah, I love oh, well, spicy. F- but, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I couldn't do it, especially drinking it. Yeah, what? Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be a food. She'll put jalapeno. No, in I'm it fully aware. With jalapeno, uh, tequila. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway, um. I think that's probably the biggest one. I think, uh, but I think that's kind of like a funny one, you know. Like, yeah, I think it's clear now that's not really what we do. Uh, Some people might. I think it's also <laughs> not very good. I think it's a misconception that it's easy. I think a lot of in-person trainers are like, "Oh, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch online coaching. It'd be so much easier." You know, like it's it's less work. Yeah. I don't have to be in the gym with people. Um, it's actually twice as much work, and I would say it's twice as hard because you need to be available more often. You need to be on the clock more often. You need to be more systemized. 
uh, your grammar, your punctuation, your systems, how you deliver content, how you deliver uh, programming needs to be so much more well thought out and methodical because it has to, like, you got to think about it. If I'm standing right in front of you in the gym, you're going to be able to do what I want you to do because I'm right here and I will keep explaining to you and showing you until you get it. Yes. But being able to translate your message through email, through voice, through video is, is way more difficult. Yep. Um, and to be able to manage your time, uh, it, it's difficult too. So I just think like, I think the biggest misconception is just that it's easy. Yeah. I think a lot of people think online coaching is easy and it's so far from that. I think I would never call in-person training easy ever. It's not. But the easiest part is showing up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the hardest part, I, mean, I won't say that, but I think uh, a hard part of online coaching is showing up. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're on the beach with my tie, like, yeah. you know, pulling well, out your computer is. Travis came in the other day to lift, Travis Hunt, and he was like, dude, he, he, what'd he say? He goes, the man in the high castle. And I was like, what? And he was like, every time I come in here, I just picture you sitting on this big rock in a castle by yourself. What? And I was like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? He's like, you're just in your zone, man. Like this, uh, this spot. And I was just cracking up. Like Tori's husband says the funniest stuff. Yeah. But he was like, how do you sit here? All He was like, who's been here today? I was like, nobody, just me. How do you sit here all day and just crush work and not get distracted, not go fuck around? And I was just like, man, like I'm just focused. But Showing up for yourself is hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? So people like, that's a good example of like, I have to sit down and like do the work all yeah, day. Absolutely. Like that's tough. I don't go to a gym and have like my boss and my other co-trainers competing against me to, and to motivate clients. me yeah. and clients in front of me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that that's probably the, probably that, or uh, another one from a client's perspective is that it's not effective. I think they're, uh, it's not as common now, but once upon a time, I think people just thought like you had to have an in-person trainer. And I would argue that online coaching is even more effective because you have more accountability. You have more structure in and outside the gym, yeah. which when you're with a trainer, you only have structure in the gym. Um, all my clients at when I worked at the gym started getting way better results when I added in online nutrition coaching hmm. to their personal training. I just hmm. did it for free. Yeah. I was like, hey, we're going to start doing weekly check-ins. You're going to track all this stuff. We're going to talk outside the gym. And they got way better results. I mean, you were just talking about how like people sought me out. That was probably why. Like, yeah. why are they getting better results? It's yeah. like because I was doing online coaching with them. Yeah. But I was also seeing them in the gym. For sure. But <laughs> what'd you just look up? Oh, tra- tra- we were talking about Travis. Huh. And he texted me yesterday to congratulate me. And <laughs> you were just saying how he's a funny dude. Like when he walks in and stuff, and he texts me. Hey, bro, Mingo. <laughs> I was like, bro, Mingo. Hey, congratulations on the new, you know. Yeah. Job, you know. Righteous. Bro Mingo. I love Travis. Yeah. Like literally I get in such a good Family. mood every time he comes around. Yeah. He's just so positive yeah. and uplifting. Yeah, exactly. You gotta surround yourself with those kind of people. Yeah. Or unless you're you got a cage of friends. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Nipsey Hustle. The All right, you guys. Continues. Good episode today.